In this video, we're going to create two firewalls running in Azure in a HA pair. They will connect to an external management station, which we will also build. The firewalls have their own front end and back end virtual networks. They will communicate over the internet through a front end load balancer provided by Azure. Each member will have their own public IP address as well as a floating public VIP. This backend load balancer will allow us to communicate to any existing virtual networks that exist. Here is our test system that we'll build and we'll connect later. Here is my cheat sheet and how I keep track of all the IP addresses that we have in our environment. I suggest you do the same. Here we are in the Azure portal. Just head over to the marketplace and search for Checkpoint. There'll be a few options, but we want to choose the option that allows us to build a management station from a template. It's the third option here today, and just select that. Now, the first thing we need to do is create a resource group, which is where all of our network addresses and ranges will be created. I'm going to call this particular one CP Management Station. It doesn't matter what you call it. I'm going to pop in a password there. The next page will give us some checkpoint specific options, what versions we want to run, what licenses we want to use. Also, it will talk about the allowed GUI list. I'm just going to put an any, any, any in here, but you must uh, secure that with your own specific IP range. Select the default for the network ranges. That's not necessarily important here and click create. This video has been sped up, but that is now deployed. Now I said I had a quick cheat sheet available, so I'm just going to fire that up. I'm going to grab the IP address that we've deployed, that's been deployed and allocated to this machine. And I'm just going to store that into my cheat sheet for later. Okay. Back to the marketplace, and we're going to create a high availability firewall cluster. This process is very similar to building the management station. Again, we're going to create a new resource group. We want these to be in separate environments. I'm going to give it the name CP Firewall, OK, and uh, pop in a couple of passwords there to get into the, the firewalls. Just set the resource group there, it didn't work the first time. Now, there are some standard options in terms of versions and licensing, but what's unique to the firewalls is the SIP key, which allows us to have a secure connection to the management station. Now, unlike the management station, we are actually going to change the name of the groups that the virtual networks are. If you have lots of virtual networks called VNet, it can get confusing. So I'm just going to change these to firewall VNet, just so we know these are the specific virtual networks set up for the firewall. Click review and everything should be OK and just click create. There we go. That does take a little bit of time, so we sped up this video, but that's what you should see just before the system is finished. So I'm going to head over to my cheat sheet and here I'm just going to pop over the IP addresses, the public IP addresses that have been assigned to each member, making sure I just keep track of those for the future. Now, here is my personal preference for putty and connection managers. And I'm just going to create little profiles here that allows me to ensure that I can SSH into each of those devices. So I'm going to SSH into the management station and each firewall member. Just ensuring that I have connectivity to my newly built systems. If this isn't working, you may want to go back and troubleshoot some of the steps that you've done before. There we go. With everything up and running, I have access to all my systems. The only thing that's left is to connect with Smart Console. So I fire up Smart Console, pop in my username and password and the IP address of my new system, and just log in. So the first thing we need to do is create an object that represents the new Azure cluster that we've just built. We're going to choose Classic Mode. We're going to give this object a name, CP Firewall. And we need the IP address of the floating IP that's been allocated to it. Go to the first member that was created. This should still be the active member under networking. And then we're going to select from the drop down box under IP configuration, the cluster VIP. This will change depending on who the member is, if it's there or not. And we're going to get that NIC public IP. And that's going to be our floating IP, our virtual IP address. And that's what we're going to use for our cluster ID, IP, I should say. There we go. Now, now we've created this cluster object. We're going to add each of the individual members to this. So the first one is going to be called CP Firewall 1. 
and we're going to pop in the public IP address of that particular system. We'll try to establish SICK. And there we go, we've done that. Hopefully we store that SICK key somewhere. And then we'll add the secondary member. Add member, CP firewall, the public IP address of that member, which will not always be sequential like it would be on a more traditional on-premise environment. Go to the, the SICK communication, pop in our SICK key that we hopefully stored. And there we go, we have established trust between our two members in our object. Now we've established a connection to these two firewalls, we need to set up the network topology. So go to Get Interfaces and Get Interfaces without topology. We see we have created two interfaces, ETH0 and ETH1. ETH0 leads to the internet, so we define that as a cluster device. And unlike an on-premise environment where you'd put the public IP address, we're going to put the private IP address because that is the IP that is actually allocated to that interface on the virtual machine. In our topology and our spoofing settings, we're going to define that this particular member is leading to the internet. It is still pointing to the internet, even though it doesn't have the public IP address assigned to it. The public IP address is assigned through an Azure level allocation. For ETH1, which is our internal, we're going to set that as a sync network. We're going to override the topology settings and say that this leads to internal, which is a bit more traditional. There we go. Once that's done, we're going to turn some features onto our firewall just to actually make it do something. So we turn some functions on here. And then we should be ready to start defining a few of our security policies. Now we've set up our connection to our firewalls and the networking topology configuration, I'm going to create F, our first security rule. This is not how it should be done in the live production, but for this test environment, this will make do. We're going to have a rule that says source of anywhere in the world. I'd recommend that later you lock this down again to your business IP addresses that you can control. And we're going to allow the services of ICMP so we can ping it. We're going to allow HTTP so we can access the web interface on the portal. And we're also going to configure SSH to ensure that we can get a CLI access to that platform once it's done. Again, I must stress that the source would not be left as an any, that'd be a ter terrible security practice, and you should lock that down to the specifics of your business. We'll set this action to accept. We're gonna track this so that we can get logs from this. Again, it says here, I'm gonna call it admin access, lock down later, you must make sure you do that. And track to log, there we go. Fantastic stuff. And let's push our first policy to these gateways. So whilst we quickly install this policy and wait for it to install, it's important to note that at the moment, we don't have any resources behind this firewall. So there's nothing for the firewall to protect. Now in many customers' environments, they will already have existing resource groups that contain um, infrastructure. In this example, we're just going to create a new one. I'm going to call this one production resource group. And I'm going to also place this in the UK South region. This is essentially just a, an empty box to put different resources into. Okay, but it is completely disconnected from our existing platform. So I select that production resource group, I click create, and I'm going to create a Windows virtual machine that we will then connect to the firewalls networks that we had created earlier and ensure that we can pass the traffic through the firewalls. So this is some standard virtual machine uh, information that we need. We're going to give it the virtual machine a name. We're going to select the operating system that we want. We're going to give it a username and a password. Now, for the disks, that's very much personal preference. Do what you need. But for the inbound ports, we want to make sure that says none. So there's no Azure level firewall given. And then from a networking perspective, you notice that this subnet is not one of the networks that we had, had created for the firewalls earlier. This is a newly created network. We're also going to make sure that the public inbound ports are turned off. This will ensure that the Windows machine does not get given a public IP address. This is really important because we must ensure that the Windows machine doesn't have internet access. It will get its internet access through the checkpoint firewall. 
There is the IP address that we have, 10104. And again, I'm just gonna pop that in my cheat sheet. There we go. We're just gonna pop that into our cheat sheet. Now I'm gonna quickly pop down to the Bastion. Bastion is essentially the Azure way of creating a jump box. This will actually create a secondary virtual network. This doesn't necessarily need to be done, but it's a really quick and easy way of getting a command access or a Windows desktop version access to this platform so we can check a few things. First thing we're gonna check is the IP address that's been allocated to the system, if I can type correctly. There we go, you can see that's the IP address that's been allocated to this virtual machine. And we know that's right. So you'll notice in this diagram, there is a link between the backend load balancer and the production demo net, the VNet we've created, that doesn't actually exist in our configuration. And there's two things we need to do to set that up. So search for root, and we're gonna do the first thing, which is create a new routing table. So find the routing table section in Azure and click create. And we're going to assign this new routing table to the production group. So in the customer's environment, this would be if they had something existing in place, okay? So you find the resource group that mimics what the customer already has in place or this new resource group that we've created. And we're gonna give it a name. And this is, I'm gonna call it production two, backend firewall, okay? Because that is the backend network that is connected to the firewall. We don't necessarily have to give it tags, you can if you want to. Click create and it will create this new policy for us. So routing tables are no good without any root statements inside them. So we need to go and find the routing table that we created. And in there, we are going to add three new root statements. Now these may exist if this is a pre-existing environment, but if this is a new build, you will have to create these. The first one we're gonna create is called production local. This will allow the production virtual network that is in the production resource group, a root statement that allows it to know where to communicate for its local network. We don't know what that local network is, so we need to go over to virtual networks, we need to find the network that was created, so production's resource group that was created in that resource group. Go to subnets, and in here we will see the IP address and the network range that was created. Now that should match the subnet mask that was on that Windows virtual machine we just created. And we call that the production range. I'm just gonna pop that in there. Small adjustment for when I last built this demo. Okay, we have that now. And we're going to pop that in there and then you need to choose virtual network and then click add and that will build your first root statement so that's the first of three that we need to build so now we're going to create the second of the three routes that we said we were going to this one is called the production to other subnets and this is going to encompass the networks that live attached to the firewalls so we're gonna collect the front end IP address range, so the virtual network connected to the front of the firewalls. We're gonna pop that in our cheat sheet for later. So we're gonna pop that in as our destination if you want to communicate to those networks. And we're gonna choose the next hop as virtual appliance, but we need to know what the next hop of our routing table is gonna be. Now I know that this goes to the load balancer, which is 10014. But to check that, we go over to our load balancers. We find our backend load balancer. We then go over to IP addresses. And you can see here that it's called 10.0.1.4. So we're just gonna pop that in there for reference later. And that is the IP address there that is used as our next hop for our routing. Okay, so pop back to our second route. We pop that in there and we'll start on the third route statement that we have to put in. So this last one is called production default root. So for this network that this Windows virtual machine lives on, it is giving it a default route for any network connection to go out. This will force all network traffic to go through the firewall if it tries to go to the internet. Again, we choose virtual appliance and the next hop of the downstream load balancer. Click OK, and then we have our three routes that are in place. Now that we've created this routing table with three root statements in it, we have to attach it to the correct virtual network. So go to virtual networks. This one is our production 
virtual network, go to subnets and find the default subnet. This should be the same subnet range that the Windows machine is on. In this instance, it's default. We find the routing tables under the details of it, and we're gonna select the production to backend firewall routing table that we created. Now the firewalls also need to know the routing information to get to that production network where the Windows machine sits. So we're just gonna quickly pop in that root statement onto both those devices. So set a static route to the production network with the next hop of the downstream load balancer. Don't forget to save the config and do that on both gateways to ensure that in the event of a failover, they both have the correct routing information. Now, all this routing information is very useful, necessary actually, but what hasn't been done yet is the peering between the production network and the backend network. And this is essentially the Azure way of saying, we currently have no cabling between the two different devices. So let's set up peering. This was something that I thought would be quite complicated when I first did this, but actually it's a lot simpler than it first sounds. So start by finding one of the networks you wish to create the peering with. I went with the production network and on the left hand side, I'm going to choose peering and add new peering. Now, luckily, this page allows us to create the peering in both directions at the same time. So I'm going to start the first part of it, which is going to be from my production VNet to the firewalls backend VNet. And then I'm going to call the second section, which is what they call the remote virtual network. And I'm going to name that backend to production. And then I need to choose the virtual network, which is going to be the firewalls network one, and then click add. This can take a couple of minutes for this to create. This video is slightly sped up and you can see there it will say updating. And then once you get that connected, you know, there is an established connection between the two systems. Now, the last thing to do is to head back over to our firewall policy. We're going to create a host object that represents the windows machine that we built. I'm going to call this one production windows. We're going to give it that IP address that we had for it, which check my cheat sheet is 10104. I'm going to set up NAT so that when it tries to go through the firewall, it'll be hidden behind the firewall's external VIP. And we now have an object that represents that firewall. So I'm going to use that as the source of where my connection is coming from. I'm just going to let it go anywhere. So to the internet, I'm going to allow it through my firewall. I'm going to track it because I'd like to get some logs and I'm going to install that on the cluster that we built. Again, we're going to install that policy. And if everything is working correctly, we should be able to test our outbound access from our Windows machine. So heading back to Azure, I'm going to go to our Windows Bastion, our jump box that we're using. And I'm going to test a ping connection to a DNS server, I know uh, that works. So success, we know that that's working. And I'm going to quickly try and search a website and we go to fast.com, a quick speed test website, and just see what the connection and the speed is through this environment. Okay, that seems to be working. We have an instant access and we're going to quickly check the BBC website and see what the news is today. There we go, 100 meg, 200 meg, good connection. To make sure that's going through the firewall, I'm just going to check the logs. And we can see there, there are some logs going, which means this connection is going through the firewall. So there you have it, a working Azure cluster with an external management station and the process to connect it to an existing infrastructure. I hope this has been helpful. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section.